Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss one of the latest examples of how this arrogant Tory government are frustrating the rule of law by breaking the law to break the law in their dodgy dealings with our public money under cover of Covid. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So one of the latest scandals surrounding the shoveling of vast sums of public money towards Tory donors and friends concerns the curious case of the broken phone of Lord Bethel, who is a health minister who has been instrumental in the awarding of large Covid contracts for the government. Essentially, rather than use their emergency powers to quickly award contracts with reputable suppliers of PPE, other medical resources and services, in order to manage the coronavirus pandemic when it hit last year, the government instead saw an opportunity for a cash grab, the likes of which, if Hollywood made a movie about it, people would go, that's a bit over the top, isn't it? Large government contracts were given to Tory donors. And I don't just mean they prioritised Tory donors over non-donors. I mean they gave large amounts of money to deliver PPE and other goods to people who had no experience whatsoever for managing such contracts. Sometimes they didn't even have a business. They set up the business overnight to be able to do it. Imagine the government gave you a large sum of money to buy medical gowns. They gave you more than enough to get the gowns on the open market, plus a hefty slice for yourself as a reward for donating to the party. You don't know how to get the gown, so you just find, you find it online, you Google it, how to get medical gowns, most probably overseas, and you order them. Naturally, because you don't know anything about the industry, it's not what you do, you don't know which companies are reliable or even about the standards of the goods. So something arrives, maybe, maybe quite late on, maybe not at all, but maybe something arrives. Perhaps it is suitable. You know, maybe you did just happen to get it from the right people. You've got something suitable. Um, you know, in many cases, you'll have been ripped off. But you don't need to apologise to the Department for Health and Social Care because they gave you the money as a reward. But sometimes what arrives, you'll really be ripped off because it won't be suitable at all. You know, um, if a few of these dodgy contracts resulted in the right PPE, that just seemed to be a bonus. So those who handed over unsuitable, unsafe goods weren't punished, nor did they have the money clawed back. Billions of pounds of taxpayer money was given away under exactly these conditions. One such friend of the party who did rather well out of it, a former Tory councillor, was given £276 million for PPE. He was able to buy a £1.5 million mansion with the proceeds. Now, he at least owned a firm that is in the medical field, only it was a bad one. He had made a loss of half a million quid the year before this Covid bonanza. In fact, he was so crap at running his business that he was only paying himself £25,000 a year for the previous five years, he said. Now, at this point, you may imagine that what I'm talking about here is shelling out more money than was needed. The government could have sourced the equipment themselves. Although this Tory councillor had a medical company, it didn't sell PPE. That's not what it was for. The government could have directly ordered the goods and got a better price. More money saved for the taxpayer. And if they'd have given that money to someone who turned out to be unreputable, they'd have clawed that money back. But like with so many of these cases, it's worse than that. The PPE supplied by this particular crook was no good. It wasn't just expensive, it was no good. The latest report in the Times said that fewer than one piece in 400 could be used, that he supplied. That means that the face shields that he supplied, which is what he was supposed to be supplying, effectively cost us £423 for each usable one. Which is not only excessively expensive, but it means we were short the number actually needed because we ordered what we wanted in stock and we didn't get it. And the more digging that groups like, say, the Good Law Project do, the more of these cases turn up. The legal group recently said that they have years worth of litigation going through the courts, more than enough to finish this government, they said. Unfortunately, I don't think we've got that long. And they are working hard to prevent the courts even taking action against the government. 
But until that happens, the government are still accountable to the law. They initially have been defending themselves in court by basically saying it was none of our business. Not kidding, that has been their defence. Uh, you, you can't take us to court because it's none of your business. Judges disagreed, repeatedly. So the problem became this for the government. They were still bound by the law. The laws that they make, I remind you. Courts had the authority to demand that relevant documents be turned over. So the government tried to solve this problem by pricing legal action out of the market. So they would claim ridiculous legal expenses were piling up. This was to, de to deter people from taking them to court for fear of having to pay these over-the-top fees if they lost, because that's what happens if you lose a court case, you have to pay legal fees from, or the, you know, from the other side. But in the Good Law Project's case, they sought on multiple occasions and won legal cost caps from judges. So the court cases kept coming and the government kept losing. So now the government seemed to have tried something else. The court can't demand we hand over documents if there aren't any documents to hand over. As such, we hear that ministers have conducted a lot of this shady business via personal email accounts, as was the case with disgraced former Health Secretary Matt Hancock, and WhatsApp on mobile phones. And it's this example that has generated the latest scandal. Lord Bethel, an, another unelected minister in Boris Johnson's government, there's quite a lot of them, was carrying out these dodgy deals using WhatsApp on their phone. The courts had ordered that the evidence on the phone be handed over. It seems that Bethel was told that this would happen last December. Oh no, said Bethel, you'll never guess what. My phone broke, so I had to get a new one, sorry. Not entirely sure how that prevents the data being recovered, mind you. It's not how that works. It's not on the phone, is it? But whatever, you know, so when did you have to replace the phone that you carried out £85 million worth of dodgy deals on? About six months ago. Oh, so that was a couple of months after you were told you'd have to hand over your phone for the investigation then. Don't know about you, but the, this, I smell a bit of a rat with this timeline. You're told that the information on your phone is needed for, for an investigation, a legal, legal action. All oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next month, you, you say your phone's broken, you need to get a new one. Then we're told that Bethel was not issued a preservation notice for his dealings. In other words, he wasn't formally told that he had to preserve data that he was using because minister's official correspondence is routinely saved, so you don't need to. Basically, the system isn't set up to deal with ministers who use unofficial means of communication to do their business. Reason? Because there is no good reason to use these unofficial channels. Ministers are given all the hardware and accounts to be able to carry out any communications needed for their role. There's absolutely no excuse for using personal means of communication, none whatsoever. In fact, you'd think it was an inconvenience to be mixing up messages from Tory donors asking for 10 million quid and your significant other asking you to pick up some milk on your way home. Imagine getting it mixed up and sending a pint of milk to your donors and bringing 10 million quid home by mistake. Embarrassing. Except basically eradicating the evidence like this should not help them evade justice. In a court of law, you know, where it is allowed to do its work, if a, depend if a defendant appeared to be tampering with evidence without a stunningly good reason, it would be taken as evidence of guilt. And that might indeed be the view of the court here as well. But these cases are civil matters. When ministers are found guilty, there are no consequences. It's not, it's not criminal action being taken. What should be happening alongside it is criminal investigations running alongside them. Were this to happen, some of these ministers would be in rather hot water. They wouldn't be in the dock grinning that the evidence seems to have been lost, sorry. But to get a criminal case brought, you need a criminal investigation. The government may not have control over the courts just yet, but they do have control over the investigators. They threatened funding for the Met and the National Crime Agency over criminal investigations into the Leave campaign lawbreaking, who then pulled those investigations. Same thing will be happening here. And without these investigations, there are no criminal proceedings. You know, and there are some who hold out hope that they will come once this government loses power, but it will have to lose power first. And there's a lot to be done to ensure that. And a lot can go wrong if it's not done. Until then, this is the latest example of the government acting with a brazen level of disregard for the law and our taxes. They are frittering away our money on corruption, 
and borrowing to do so as well. That means they're not just wasting our taxes as we're paying them now, but the taxes we will have to pay even when this government is removed for years after. Because it's all been piled onto the national debt. Maybe they should be made to pay that back as well. See if Jacob Rees-Mogg is still smirking then. But that's a long way off. And as I've said before, I don't hold my breath waiting for it. But those are my thoughts for now. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.